Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill this Sunday morning. Our next guest is a mother of three girls and making the adjustment, like many moms, to working from home. Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spamberger of Virginia is joining us live this morning from Harenko County, Virginia. She represents, as you know, the 7th District of Virginia. Congresswoman, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on the Hill. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers and aunties out there, and particularly Happy Mother's Day to all of our frontline workers, uh, our healthcare workers, our mm. uh, frontline workers, essential workers who are keeping yep. our communities going for us during this time. Absolutely. So you've got three girls of your own, Claire, Charlotte, and Catherine. How have you been kind of explaining all of this to them? Well, so my, my daughters, I've got a kindergartner, a third grader, and a sixth grader. So they're at very different levels in terms of understanding what's occurring with the pandemic. My littlest misses her friends and my you know, my oldest is very worried about the public health implications. So uh, we've been trying to maintain a little bit of normalcy for them. Uh, they've been having, like so many kids across the community, uh, Zoom meetings with their teachers. Uh, they've been uh, playing with each other fairly nicely. We've been doing a bit of homeschooling, but you know, I've, I've been <laughs> focused so much on constituent needs yeah. Uh, so uh, right. it's been interesting for them because they actually now have a more upfront view to what it is that I'm doing in my job and my conference calls right. and my video conferences and the like. So let's talk a little bit about this, because just prior to, to, to having you on here, we spoke to somebody from the food service industry. Food insecurity is something you've been working on through this. And this is just not the typical population sometimes that are in need of, of this kind of service. You're, you're finding people that are entering a need for food right now who previously had, had no need. Before. So how is Congress, how is the federal government responding to that right now? So we, with record unemployment, we're seeing a tremendous uh, increase in, in food instability and instability in every aspect of, of our economy. Uh, and we have constituents calling us with real concerns. Luckily, here in central Virginia, we have a tremendous network of food banks with our central Feed More Food Bank that services uh, more than 20 counties, most of them within the 7th Congressional District. So we have a, a solid infrastructure here, but uh, the challenge is food insecurity for those who've lost their job. Then there's also supply chain issues. I serve on the Agriculture Committee, and the supply chain issues that we've seen, particularly um, with meat producers, has been tremendously mm -hmm. challenging. Uh, many of the processing plants, you know, as, as you likely have reported on and know, um, have been faced with mm -hmm. massive outbreaks that's impacted our supply chain of meat. Uh, and then beyond that, with such a disruption, yeah. with no uh, limited purchasing from restaurants, school closures, um, hotel and university purchases uh, not being what they used right. to be, the supply chain of you know fruits and vegetables, uh, where those would typically go, is just not there. So uh, farmers and producers are working to be adaptive. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about also uh, some of the moves you've made in regards to, to looking at what's gone on with this national stockpile of PPEs, the personal protective equipment. You, along with your Virginia colleagues, um, Jerry Connolly and Congressman Don Beyer, have called for uh, an investigation as to what is going on with the national stockpile, why states were not able to quickly access some of this stuff and get it to them. Now, the president, as you have heard, has blamed the Obama ad administration. Investigation hasn't been done yet, but what, what questions do you have about all of this? And will this look back at what went on in the previous administration? The, the purpose of, of an investigation in this purpose, and you know, my background's in intelligence, I'm a former CIA officer, it's all about contingency planning and moving forward. And we need to understand what has gone wrong in order to ensure that it doesn't go wrong again. Uh, we have heard the president talk about you know, prior administrations, but the, the goal of this national strategic stockpile is, it for, is, is for it to be ever changing and adaptive to what the needs mm -hmm. of our country are and what they may be in the future. Uh, so there were clear places where that level of adapting wasn't there. Um, we weren't ready from a stockpile standpoint for the needs that we faced as it related to testing equipment and personal protective equipment. And then the distribution mm -hmm. that we saw, we saw really um, varying levels of distribution, some states receiving just a fraction right. of what they 
requested, some states receiving um, everything. Yeah. And moving forward, particularly with a virus that is, uh, you know, will be cyclical and may come back, you know, sooner than later, we need to be prepared. And part of that preparation is knowing what went wrong the first time. And um, real quickly, uh, Congresswoman, Virginia is looking at reopening. Um, and just in, in a few seconds, do you feel this should be phased in? Maybe a difference between Northern Virginia and the rest of the state, maybe where you are? I, I think it's going to have to vary what we're seeing in terms of, of outbreaks and impact. Right. Um, testing and con contact tracing is key. Uh, Virginia has mobilized yeah. the Medical Reserve Corps to conduct that contact tracing, which is vital. Okay. Uh, but we need to be right. driven by the science and the facts to keep the people okay. safe. Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, we appreciate you joining us on the Hill this morning. We thank you and happy Mother's Day to you.